we're back for another video and uh, we're looking at a table full of radio stuff. So uh, what are we doing with this? Well, we're going to put it in the six wheel drive ambulance. As I've alluded to in my last few videos, I have a trip coming up. I'm going to need radio comms. And yes, this is a TYT radio. And no, we're not pushing 50 watts. We've wound it back to five so that uh, we shouldn't get into too much trouble on the UHF band. We just need it for a temporary one. Then we'll probably get something that's actually um, band plan compliant so that uh, it only puts out five watts. This one you can actually hardware limit it to five, which is what I've done. It's basically a surface mount resistor you've got to swap over. Not going into details with that, but um, we do have these little brackets I've made up to try and adapt it into the ambulance. And uh, I'm not going to go to the trouble of mounting an antenna base yet. I'm going to use a mag base that I've had sitting around for donkey's years. I'm going to get all this cleaned up and at least try and get it functional for the 1000k trip. And then we'll be able to uh, go from there. All right, so we're inside the ambulance and it definitely does need a dust out and a clean out. Um, and we need to put the fuse box cover back on. I'll do that at some point. Um, I thought about mounting it up in this top bay. But after pulling that cover off, there's going to be some pretty significant modifications I'm going to have to do. I don't really want to do that. So instead, we're going to mount onto this bracket here, which is riveted on. And we've got a couple of mounting screws there. I'm pretty sure it had some medical equipment on there at some point. Or I'm sure it had something there. Possibly a military band radio um, with, the head, with the remote unit. Because there used to be a big HF antenna on the bonnet that got flogged a couple of weeks before I bought this. So, um, on the radio, we're going to um, use a couple of snake eyes screws just to make life a little difficult for would-be thieves. And this thing's passworded anyway with remote shutdown feature as well. So if somebody does flog it, I can shut it down and I can have it beacon till I find it. Anyway, let's try and fit one of these guys. All right, brackets mounted. Now I'm going to have I'm going to be uh, lucky if these fit because I eyeballed them. Now, some of you might know these radios and know that they do come with a mounting bracket. That's correct, except this has had multiple lives and the bracket went missing somewhere in the previous vehicle, which I think I went, think that old vehicle went to scrap last week. So good luck me getting that bracket back again. And uh, I'm not going to go back to my old place of work with one of these because they'll be like, yeah, we're not touching that. And that's fair enough. So, um, yeah, let's see if it fits in. All right, looks like it's in. I can hear my neighbor's fan belt. They're just reversing out. Wow, I probably need to tell them to replace the fan belt on that. Anyway, this, I should be able to do it tight enough up that it will sit in a fairly stable position. This looks a little wonky, but at least it's in here. Um, it does mean I can do this and I can get to the antenna socket. Now, there's another problem. We'll go inside and talk about that in a minute. Um, I'll find a way to route these cables. I might rip the ashtray out and put a, a grommet or something in there because the ashtray is really not doing much in here. It's holding, holding a key in here that actually doesn't... This key doesn't actually fit it, I don't think. No. Let's have a look over here. No. Not even the right key. All right. But, yeah, we might remove that and put a cable ga grommet in there because... There's auxiliary power right there. And that'll make my wiring nice and easy. Or at least from there I can go through the firewall and back to directly to the battery. If I so wish to do so. I do have a solar panel I want to add to this too. But I don't know if I get the time to do that. Um, and yeah, somewhere along here I'll find somewhere to hang the mic. I could use the old microphone hanger up here that goes with the PA mic on that. Because we have no speaker. Because the coppers are a bit upset about that. So I might better hang it up there and make it look like part of the PA system. Uh, it does use a Cat5 socket, so I might be able to run a socket up here and hang the mic up there. That might work. Um, what's more than likely going to happen with the time constraints I have now is I'm just going to plug it in and sit it on the floor for the time being. But that's okay. I might even stick a magnet on it so I can just magnet the thing onto here. I'll come up. That's a, that's a problem for tomorrow, tomorrow Aussie repair guy. Not today Aussie repair guy. Today, Aussie repair guy is just nutting out if this is even possible. 
I've left these loose because I'm going to do them up with the snake eyes a bit later. I don't want to have to undo them because it's a pain in the ass. Um, let's go sort out our antenna stuff. Now, one of the things that happens when you work for, for a company that is also a GME dealer, as well as an ICOM dealer, you learn the part numbers pretty well. So this is an AE4018. This is basically a five and a, a basically a uh, fiberglass whip antenna, and it's good for about six and a half dB or six point six if you want to be really specific, and that's dBi. Makes a big difference to dBd. Um, just a different way of measuring it. DBD is kind of like the PMPO of the RMS world, if that makes sense. Now, I have an old loudspeaker. Um, the speaker in those units works pretty well, so for the time being, I don't think I'm going to worry too much about that. Um, I have my handpiece here. I've got two of these. One of these I custom weighted because if you sit them on the bench, they flip over and they move around. I put a custom white metal weight in there. I might have to make another one later on. <coughs> anyway, we have a handpiece. This is our magnetic base with a little uh, little 2.1 dB whip on it, which is basically a piece of calibrated braid. <coughs> Useful if you want vehicle to vehicle comms and you don't want to be interrupted by vehicles from a long way away. Um, also handy if you're in the hills and you want a really round radiation pattern. Um, this might not have as much gain, but it radiates out in a nice big spherical pattern. Something like this gives you sort of more like a UFO disc shape radiation pattern. It tends to skip off the top of hills. Um, so yeah, sometimes the short antennas, while they're not as manly or masculine, are actually a good idea. Now I notice here I've got a bit of a nick in the insulation. I will probably need to address that. Now I have a B and C fitted to the end of this. I thought about fitting a PL259 to this, which because the radio I have has an SO239. Believe it or not, an SO239 fits into a PL259. They didn't do something silly like make it an SO259, because it's SO for socket and PL for plug. Anyway, I can get adapters for that. Normally I should have an adapter. Uh, let's have a look actually. This is a collection that come from my late brother. Um, he was much more into the amateur scene. I actually got my advanced amateur radio license at one point. It took me a couple of attempts. The first attempt, I got one question wrong and it knocked me out. I got my second one and then my brother did his thing and I had no brother anymore. So uh, I let that lapse. I didn't have anybody to talk to. Anyway, uh, okay, I, piece, I have a BNC 2N type adapter. That's not going to help me. Uh, well, it does, because I've probably got an N-Type 2 PL259 adapter. I have a PL259 that's a screw-on, or screw-fitting one, with a solder nib. I could attach that, that would be fine, but that would make it hard to get through the firewall. And as this is a temporary fitting, I want to be able to pull it back through. Actually, where I'm going to shove this cable is probably the wire holes. Um, where the 24 volts comes into the main distribution box in the back. Um, so, I might go and see my old boss. Um, well, actually, he used to be co-worker, then he bought the business, then he was my boss. And, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I finished up working there, partly because of the, uh, the stresses involved that, while well, I got MS, I couldn't really continue to do the job properly as was required of me. And so, yeah, I was duly fired, which I don't blame him for. I wasn't doing the job properly. Anyway, he's friendly enough. I can go and see him and get an adapter for that. But this needs to clean up. It really does need a clean up job. And it needs some more foil tape on the bottom of that. So this has had some blue tack on to hold it down. Let's just give this a good clean up and see what it looks like. I think I'm going to use um, some handy dandy Aldi brand spray and wipe and a rag um, that's pretty much all we used to do when we did cables and stuff professionally just put some of that on a rag and run the cable through it I'm just gonna find my rags anyway we'll be back now excuse the background noise I've had to turn the air on so I've just run this cable through <laughs> a bit of spray and wipe in a rag well 
yeah, there was a lot of dirt on there. And this cable, actually, I'm pretty sure has had a hard life. There's lots of little squishes and bumps and stuff on here. That's probably not going to handle that SWR very well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of little bits and bobs. And by SWR, I mean standing wave ratio. We're going to test the tuning on this at some point too. And if it is too far knackered, we're probably going to um, reuse this magnet and put a different base on here or a different mount. Oh, if I can get this off, there we go. That just unscrews. That's our antenna fitting. This does provide a bit of ground plane for it. Um, anyway, we want to get... I'm not sure what the RF properties of this stuff is, but it doesn't seem to leave much of a residue, so I think the RF properties are going to be better than the dirt that's on it at the moment. Not that it really makes a huge amount of difference at 5 watts. Um, a bit of this stuff on the top. It's looking so much better now. All right. Well, that magnet's looking good anyway. Um, now I need to find some aluminium tape to put on the bottom. Let's find that. All right, now this is probably one of the most common things that was sold um, at the place where I worked. It's the ABL001. They're basically a pre-wired antenna base with an FME and an FME to PL259 adapter on the end. Really handy because you can poke them through a tiny little hole in the firewall and then put the adapter on. We used hundreds of those. And an actual, I actually remember that and stainless whips, six and a half dB stainless whips. Um, I think uh, it was an AE4016, which is the stainless version of this fiberglass. I think my apprentice is having a meltdown at the moment. She did something she shouldn't earlier on. And uh, I removed the arrow keys on her keyboard, and she's only just discovered that. Modern punishment. Anyway, when she comes to apologise for what she did, I'll give her her arrow keys back. They are currently hiding in here. Something that she was repeatedly warned about and uh, decided not to do. So, anyway, after that little interlude, yes, I think I personally installed almost a hundred radios by the time I was finished uh, working for them back when I was still doing a good job of them um, yeah by the time MS had happened I realized I was having some brain lesions uh, and some problems walking and a lot of other stuff so certainly very explainable reasons as to why my performance dropped off anyway let's see what we can do now this is also a piece of my late brother's kit this is a SWA meter or SWR meter um, and we have a bunch of adapters and whatnot that my brother left on here. Basically, I have a dummy load fitted to this, and it has it has a name on it, um, largely because I used to use it at work. Anyway, um, and I didn't want to get them mixed in with the other ones at work. Sometimes we would, didn't have enough of these dummy loads to go around. Anyway, this one can do UHF and VHF. What this does is basically checks your tuning. Um, so when you have a standing wave ratio or a standing wave on the cable, when it hits the other end, if the tuning isn't quite right, some of that energy can bounce back down the cable and it can bugger up your transmit thing. So usually 1.1 to 1 is ideal, perfect, but that never really ever happens. So you might be looking sort of 1.2 or 1.3 to 1 it's an exponential scale, hence why it's a bit funky the way this is laid out. Anyway, much more than 1.3 to 1, and you're starting to get into sort of dangerous territory. Um, yeah, sometimes in a small setup you might go 1.4 to 1, but you know, once you start getting up there in power, the, exponent, the power return is also exponential. So yeah, as you go up in power, SWR matters more and more. Anyway, we will test this, but once we have the transmitter powered up, um, for now, we're going to shove this back in the dust pile. Alright, so we're back on the test bench here, and uh, I decided I'm going to do a few things differently to what I'd actually planned. So I've sent off to my local engineering workshop to make me a flange to fit on the bonnet of the uh, Ambo, 
and uh, we're going to ditch this mag base. We're not going to use it. So, you know what, let's just throw all this aside and uh, continue on. Well, we're back outside with the ambulance for a minute, and I noticed something that gives me an idea of my driving skill. I left these on here last night, and I did my running around this morning in the ambulance because I needed to size stuff up, and they're still here on the guard. So I think that's probably a testament to my uh, driving. I'm not flying around corners. Anyway, let's get on with the job. All right, so I swear tested the mag base antenna, and that cable is shagged. I'm not going to put any kind of a transmitter on there. Um, I'll keep the magnet, but I will get the new cable and whatnot for it if I can manage. Anyhow, we're going to use this fitting here, which is where the original uh, HF antenna base used to go, the uh, motor-driven tuner. We're going to fit the ABL001 in here. Sent off to the local manufacturing company to make me up a flange this morning, um, and they reckon they'll have it done by this Arvo. So now I need to figure out how to route the cable. And doing radio installs, the bit that used to always frustrate the living hell out of me is all the plastic bits and pieces inside the cabin. This one doesn't have any of them. This one does, and at some point I do have to remove them all to find out exactly what's going on in the roof lining. But let's hope we can get away with not doing that this time. I think there's a couple of ways I can make it happen. But anyway, let's get this rolled out and laid out in the sun so we get all the kinks out of it. Alright, now it's uh, worth noting these are stainless bolts. These are M10s or metric 10. I uh, used the phrase mill the other day and I'm like, they're 10 mil bolts. And people are like, what is mill? Is this some military thing? I mean millimeters. I mean metric. So, uh, yeah, they're 10 mil coarse thread. Stainless. So, uh, anyway, what we want to do is figure out how to get a cable from there in the dash. Let's do that. All right, so we're under the hood at the moment, and I realize something else I need to do. I may have got these two cables backwards. These are the cables for the air conditioning and the heater core and stuff. I will figure that out later, though. Um, that's a pretty simple case to swap them around. Uh, now, um, I could follow these two vacuum lines, the red and the white one in here. That's for the center diff lock engagement. These go in behind the dash. That would probably be the easiest way to get it in there that's up above everything. But there are some cheeky ways I can poke down through here. Um, oh, and I'm realizing there's more I need to do. Every time I look at this, there's more stuff to be done. And uh, yeah, definitely this guy needs to go back on. It's jammed down there, but this, this hose needs to go back on there um, so that we can have some airflow in the cab. <sighs> um, yeah. I could go in this side of the dash. I think there's an entryway in there, although I feel rubber through that. Um, this is the wiper control box too. They're cable controlled wipers, by the way. It does make it easier to get into the wiper motor. All right, I'm gonna have a think for a bit and uh, see if we can find a way in. Now, back inside the cabin, um, one of the main considerations I'm going to make is to uh, shove this cable through under the ashtray. By the way, those two push cables that connect to these things too, I replaced them a while ago. And uh, I've lost the knob off the top and the little screw, but anyway. Um, we'll pull our ashtray out because, you know, none of us smoke here. This gives us fairly clear access up in behind that firewall. Um, it doesn't, it's not as easy to get in behind this. Um, but that is pretty well firewall right there. So, because, uh, yeah, when you pull this off, the, the glove box is the rear wall. The glove box is the firewall that just comes away. So let me have a think about it. I hear my neighbours arguing in the background, too. But that's not uncommon. All right, let's keep on going. All right. The cable's been in the sun for a bit, and it's nice, soft, and pliable. We'll run that through my hands in a bit and straighten that out, and it should hopefully stay that way. All right, so we decided to go with the easy approach. We're threaded in under the corner here, under our, well, under our quarter panel, under our airline behind our brake booster and over the clutch and into there, because there's no rubber grommet in there. See if we can fish it out somehow from the other side. Okay, well, a half hour and a bit of swearing later, we have our cable hanging out the hole here. 
All right, it involved having to unscrew the whole dash module and fish the cable out, poke it through, and then go over the top of this and then back out the hole and screwdrivers and pliers and bent wire and anyway, even with simple vehicles like this, it's still frustrating and if you enjoy doing radio installs, that's great, but do it for a job, you can end up hating every aspect of it. All right, so problem as is always the case. The crimps on these are too friggin' long and we're gonna bugger the coax up. All right, so I went to my old place of work and they had a couple of these, so I threw them a bit of cash. They gave me a couple of these um, SO239 to PL259 right angle adapters. So now we have a mess, a mess of adapters in here, but I haven't had to cut a lead off. And it does give me some options in the future. We will swire test that and see how well it works. But for the moment, I think that's going to work okay. I'll make myself an adapter. This cable is going to tuck in here. And I'll make a cover plate for that later on. Um, for the moment, it needs to be functional first. I think what I'll do with the excess cable I've got here, I'll use that as a shuttle to pull another cable through to attach to these, and uh, we'll put a fuse and a cable straight back to the battery, I think. Anyway, let's, uh, let's continue on. All right, I've had a delivery, and this isn't strictly how it arrived. I had four really precision drilled holes in here, and I measured with a measuring tape, so it was a little bit off. So we've done some mods. Alright, well it's the next morning and it's been raining most of the night and a significant portion of the morning. So, um, I have found a few things. I found an Anderson plug, I found this thing for my charger we're going to put on the battery, and I made up a lead to fit to the radio to thread through. Um, I need to go and get a fuse holder today. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've decided what I'm going to do is stick this Anderson plug straight to the battery put an Anderson plug on that. For various reasons, I think that's gonna be a good idea. Um, so, we are gonna to have to flip the battery around and I do need to find an inline fuse holder for this. These do have a fuse up on the other end, but um, if we have a short on the cable somewhere down here, we're gonna be in trouble. Um, but anyway, I need to get this cable pulled through anyhow. And uh, I've also laser cut a little cover for the, um, the fuse, uh, the, uh, the hole in the dash, let me show you. Rain not working well this morning. I've made up a plate, or I'm going to laser cut a plate to cover that. I've drawn up the designs last night. I also used my last Amphenol plug to connect into the uh, auxiliary box down here to an Anderson plug. So I now have 24 volts on an Anderson up here if I need to. And I have a number plate bracket for the trailer, but that's another video. All right. Um, what I think I'm going to do is get a bit of tape, I'm going to pop the bonnet, I'm going to tape my new cable to the coax with the excess length and shuttle it back through at the firewall. I think that's going to be the most sensible way to do this. Alright, we're taped onto the coax here. Now this coax does not like being stretched or pulled, so we've got to be gentle with this. But uh, we'll jiggle it through and it should work its way over the top of this back at the firewall. There's not much in the way. All right, and there we go, a little minimal bit of jiggling. There's our power wire out. All right, let's um, go and uh, get that untaped and moved. All right, our cable is through, and crucially, I left myself enough slack in here that I can get to the fuse holder in there if I ever need to change that fuse. Um, now, some nufty that changed this battery in the past put it in the wrong way around. Uh, one of the indicators is the way these cables are crossed over. 
The other is the fact that they had to put this piece of foam here to uh, stop this bar from touching across from both battery terminals. So uh, we're going to pull this battery out and spin it round. It's going to be fun. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, so that was far more of an endeavor than it sounded like. Um, anyway, I cleaned the top of the battery with a bit of general purpose spray and wipe get all, to get all that gunge off. I had a near miss with shorting out and welding this bracket to the battery because I realized that the terminals that I had left on there were going to collide with that. Um, now, at this point, I'm going to chop this off and I'm going to make doubly sure that I have the right lead to the right terminal. This is one of these simple things that you can get complacent about that can cause untold havoc. So, if I get this wrong, my trip is not happening. Not in this vehicle, at least. Alright, so, um, yeah, let's uh, take a bit of time, have a bit of a think, pull this stupid rubber shit off, and, uh, yeah, we'll get this happening. Now, uh, I should have found a wire brush and given these a scrub up before I put it back on, but see how it goes for now. Um, I'm just checking, there is still a chance of a short circuit from this right here, but this neck when it's laying down can slop all over the place. Its hinge point being back here means its potential for that is much lower. I may still insulate that anyway, but uh, if this does have a potential to touch anything with this neck, it's going to be the negative terminal, and that bit is grounded, so I think we'll be alright. Anyway, let's get the other terminal on. Alright, well we're in, and uh, I'll need to uh, zip these out of the way of that, uh, this handle at some point too. Now, just to clarify, this is for my Victron charger. That means I can't accidentally forget my clips, and if I need to charge it, I can plug straight out of the 24 volt inverter and plug the charger into that, and uh, then run the 12 volt charger off that. So, um, I can charge my battery off the 24 volt system, which is handy. Um, this, I'll be running the radio off. I've got another one inside. I will wire that up to these cables. It also means for a quick disconnect or easy isolation of the radio because it goes back to the battery. So if I'm going to be parked for a long time, I can just pull the plug. Or if I need to charge something or if I need to run something directly off that like an air compressor, I can just plug straight into there instead of using clips. All right. The magpies are hungry. You can probably hear him getting fed up there. He's a young magpie. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. We'll keep going. All right, this is what I refer to as smoke test time. This is where we find out if we've buggered anything up. And yes, the colors do match. Um, am I doing this right? All right, I haven't heard anything go bang. Let's go find out. All right, now, um, power button. Okay, it comes up with my radio. And where's my handpiece? I need to punch in a code here, um, if I remember. Alright. We will turn that down because we're not allowed to rebroadcast that stuff. Let's whiz around to... Um, something else that's on UHF. Probably CB. Let's try channel 4. There's a channel 4 repeater nearby. Let's turn you up a little bit. See if we can get a tail off that. Awesome. About channel six. No. Channel seven's nearby. I know that one, BRN07. Channel eight, I think, is way up in the hills. Okay, cool. And channel one repeater, I think, is even further away. Can't get channel one. Anyway, it sounds like we're working. Cool bananas. I'm gonna do a radio check. Oh, can any station give me a radio check, please? Just put a new radio in. Yeah, radio check, please. Anybody on air? I don't know. We'll have to get hey, you're working, mate. 
Ah, beautiful. Thank you. You get that fine to two hours. Awesome. Uh, not bad for five watts. All right. See you later. All right. Cool. Made the trip. We have radio comms. Now we've got to fill the gap. That's going to take even longer. One last thing before I forget. Um, I need to find a snake eyes drive a bit to do these up. That one should do it. All right, let's change hands. This is a little difficult to do one-handed. Let's change our focus here. Uh, this should hopefully stop some of the thieves. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of this off camera because I really need two hands for this. All right, we're in nice and firm. That's not going anywhere. I can sort of see what I'm looking at, um, but I don't really need to be staring at that when I'm driving anyway. I'll pretty well set it to what it should be and leave it. <sighs> All right, now I've got voltmeter things to do. That's going to be interesting. Actually, you know what? I've had a look at how much footage I've got. I think we're going to leave this particular video right here. I'm going to do a separate video entirely on doing that. Um, just because it's going to take forever and uh, it splits it up into a couple of videos that you guys can probably prolong the interest a bit with anyway I hope you found it interesting um, thumbs up if you liked the video I guess and uh, I'll see you in the next one and uh, yeah I'm sure you guys will discuss in the comments seems to be whenever I touch radio stuff everybody's got an opinion so uh, anyway argue it out in the comments but uh, just keep it simple or civil civil that's the key word anyway see you next time